Hello there, welcome to an introduction to paint.net tutorial. Today I will show you how to use a few of the tools available to enable you to start creating computer generated drawings and images using paint.net. Paint.net is freeware, which means you do not have to pay to use it. Considering this fact, it has some great features available for use. To download the application, visit the paint.net website and head to the download page. Once on the download page, head to the download section and click on the link below the download column. This will take you to a new page uh, where you are able to download paint.net on the right hand side of the screen. Once downloaded, install and run the application. When you have opened the application, you will notice various windows available to use within the paint.net interface. On the upper left hand side, you have the tools bar. Here you can select the primary drawing tools available for use in paint.net. We will discuss some of the tools available here in this tutorial. On the upper right hand side, there is a histories window. Paint.net logs every amendment made to an image and can easily trace its step backwards if you decide that you do not want to include changes you have recently made. On the lower right hand side, you will have a layers window. Layers are a powerful tool but at this stage we will not be discussing or using layers. On the lower left side is the color palette. Here we can change the colors we are currently working with. We can swap the current color we wish to paint with. We will demonstrate this tool in this tutorial. All of these windows and sidebars can be hidden by selecting them at the top right hand side of the interface. For example, in our case, we do not require the layers window so we can remove it by clicking on the layers icon. To give us something to work with, I've already created a JPEG image consisting of a picture of a rocket. JPEGs are the most popular file format for image saving in the best quality and most cameras save in this format. There are several other formats available, each with their own advantages and disadvantages, but for this tutorial, we will stick with JPEG images. To open our JPEG image, we go to File, Open, go to the folder where our image is located and double click it to open. In this tutorial, we will create the background for our rocket image while demonstrating some of the primary tools available to use within paint.net. The first tool we are going to look at is the brush tool. The brush tool works in a similar way to the pencil tool, however it is also possible to change the width and hardness of each stroke with the brush tool specifically. Let's draw some meteorites in our background image. We can change the width of our meteorite drawings if we want to, as well as add a different hardness for each of them. This can give the effect of distance. So here we'll select brush width of two, and we'll draw some meteorites. As meteorites can be any shape or size, using the brush tool is perfect as accuracy in our drawings is not required. So here are some meteorites being drawn on the screen. I'm now going to draw a couple more meteorites with a different brush width. This should give the effect of the meteorites being closer. And therefore more visible. So there we have some meteorites. Let's draw a couple more with a different level of hardness. These may give the effect of being further back into the distance, so we'll change the brush width back to two. We do notice a slight difference in the drawing there. It's more of a blurrier representation of a meteorite. And that's what happens when you use the hardness tool. The next two tools I will demonstrate are the color palette tool and the paint bucket tool. 
The color palette tool allows us to select which color we want to draw or paint with. If we wish to draw a couple more meteorites in a slightly different color, we can change our color like so. Um, I will select the gray color and this is updated in the color palette. We are still um, using the brush tool as that's selected. So now we can draw a couple more meteorites in our new color. Again, if we change the brush width, we can also create meteorites that look a little bit closer to us. Next, the paint bucket tool can be used along with the color palette to change the colors of objects we've already created. For example, we could change the color of the rear section of our rocket to red by selecting the red color as our primary color in the color palette, then select the paint bucket tool and click on that rear section. When we're over the section we want to recolor, we can simply click the mouse button to change it to that color. When using the paint bucket tool in this way, it's also possible to select either the primary or secondary color in the color palette by clicking either the left or right mouse button depending on your color preference. So if we go to our color palette and change the secondary color to blue, and then we go back to the rear section of our rocket and press the right mouse button, you will see that the blue color is selected. We can click the left button and it uses the primary color. So this is quite a useful tool if you want to use two particular colors at the same time. It should be more than helpful and an efficient way of using this system. So what would also be great is if we could use the paint bucket tool to create the feeling of a night sky in which our meteorites are contained within. So we can use the paint bucket tool, select the black color and simply drop, select the part of the image we want to recolor, select the color we wish to use and we can create our night sky. Do notice that our rocket has changed into part black as well. This is because the tolerance level of our paint bucket is set to 50. This means that um, a lot of the other colors can be overridden with the black due to the level of tolerance. If we don't revert to our previous image before we made the amendment and adjust the tolerance level to perhaps 20 and then use the paint bucket tool again to color our night sky, you will notice that it is not covered these gray areas in black as well because of the lower to tolerance level. The tolerance level is a really useful feature that can ensure that we get good results from our image amendments. Our image is now starting to feel more space-like, but we are missing something important, stars. And while we're at it, we can draw a planet and give it a moon as well. For this, we're going to use the shapes tool. By selecting the shapes tool and clicking on the toolbar at the top to select which type of shape we want to use, we can draw shapes on our images. So first of all, we want to draw some star shapes. So there are a few different shapes we could use here. So we can use all of these to draw a couple of stars for each one. So select the six point star. We can change our primary color to white to draw some white stars and we can draw some tiny stars in the distance. We can draw any size stars we want by just holding the left button on the mouse and pulling as far as we want to go for our stars. We can also change the colors of our stars again if we want to select some different colors and we can change to a different pointed stars to add some variety to our image. To draw a planet, we can select the circle shape. If you want to lock into a circle shape, you should press the shift key while you create your circle. So 
in our case, we want to select white color for primary and white for secondary as well. And we want to select to draw the field shape as such. This will ensure that when we draw our circle, the color inside the circle will be white. So if we draw our planet, In the bottom corner like so and then if you want to change the color of our planet we can just select a color tool either the primary or the secondary remembering that we can use the right and left mouse buttons to select the color that we want so now if i select the paint bucket tool and click inside we have a ready orange color planet finally we'll use the line tool to create a half moon that belongs to our new planet. So we'll draw another circle like so and then we're going to switch to the line tool and create a line with a brush width of two and color of black down our moon. Now what we can do is use these handles on our line to create our half moon. like so. Finally, we can use our paint bucket tool again to colour out the remaining part of the moon that we don't wish to use. And there you have it. From our space rocket image, original image, we have created a background that truly encompasses the feeling of space in this colourful image. Thank you for watching.